So instead of writing these middleware functions one after another, what we can actually do is chain two of them together. And I'll show you how this works. So here I have these two middlewares for apps.get hello, and I've declared this app.get twice, and I've got this next function that then runs this. So instead, if I have this specified order in mind, what I can do is I can take this function here, so I can cut this out. I can just put a comma here and then paste the function in like that. Uh, I should get rid of this as well. And then if I just get rid of this. So this what this will do is for apps slash get hello, it'll, this, this function is the first argument, so it'll run that. And then it'll run this function, which is a second argument. And if I wanted to do a third thing, I can just do comma and then put another function in. So basically, the structure is um, app dot and then whatever the method is, then the path, and then as many functions as you want. And it'll run these functions one after the other. So we still have to use the next method in mind to tell us that we're finished here. So again, what this will do is when we go to slash hello, it'll intercept that root. It'll log the requests method. It'll log the requests IP. And then it'll run the next function in the series, which comes after this comma here. And this will load the index.html file. So let's start up the server and have a look. So if I go to localhost 3000 slash hello, we can see that the HTML file has loaded up OK. And if we look here, we can see that the this has happened and this method and IP have both been logged here. And yeah, this part was executed fine. OK, so what they want us to do here is uh, they want us to implement um, two middleware functions. So in the first function, what it wants us to do is create a dot time field in the request object and add in the current time as a string. And in the second function, what it wants us to do is return a JSON as a response with that time field. So let's do that. So the route they want us to do is for get now. So let's do that first. So app.get and then the path is slash now. Okay, so then we can put these commas here and we can put the first function here between these commas and the second function here. So the first function takes in the request response and then the next. Okay, so that's the first function. And the second function, because we are sending the response out, so we're using response.json, we can simply just take in the request and the response. We don't have to take in next here. So then what they want us to do is, in the first function, we need to create a time field and then set it to the current time as a string. So to do this, we can say we have the request here, so we can do request.time, so this will create or edit the time field. And what we can do is, to get the current date as a string, we can just create a new date here, and then we can call the toString method for this. Next thing it wants us to do is return a JSON with the time like this, and then the time from our request. So here, we can just do request.json, and we can say time. Remember, this is a, this has to be given as a JavaScript object, so this is why I'm putting the time in quotations. So time like this, and then we can just do the requests dot time. Um, also, an important thing to note is we have to call the next here because otherwise we don't know when we're finished of this function. So again, what this will do is when the user gets the slash now. Um, so basically, they just put that into the browser. It creates or edits a time field in the request. It sets that to the current date in a string format. It then tells it to do the next function, which is this. And this returns a JSON from the JavaScript object with time and then the request time like this. So let's try it. Um, so I just go to the live app, copy. And if I paste it into here and then put slash now, which is the root that was set, we can... Uh, Hang on. New date dot to string is not a constructor. Um, that's odd. I'm gonna try this again. Oh my bad. This needs to have some uh, brackets here because this is a constructor method. If we save it and try again. 
uh, this should be response. Again, my bad. If we save it now, there we go. So it worked. Again, I'm going to refresh that because I've just made a few changes. So again, it'll intercept the slash now root. It'll create a time field in the request and set this to a new date to string method. So which is just a string representing the current date. It'll tell it to go to the next function and in the next function it'll call the JSON method to return a JSON that has a JavaScript object with this time here and then the requests time. And we can see that the current time has been logged here as a string. So again just copy the link for the main home page of the app which is just this live app link and uh, paste it in here and submit it and yeah you're good to go.